so we're going to draw some fruit for our still lives. We're going to draw two different fruit. We're going to draw an apple, and we are also going to draw a pear for our still life. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a pear. A pear is essentially two circles with a curve to kind of join them. You're going to start on your paper by making a large circle. On top of your large circle, you're going to add a second circle, just the same way you would add a second circle when creating a snowman. That means your second circle is going to be smaller and directly on top. The next step is you're going to make a backwards parenthesis. The backwards parenthesis is going to connect the two circles. You're going to put it there and you're going to repeat the process on the other side. A pear has a stem, not directly on the top, but just a little bit down, and it usually goes out in a curve. I'm going to color in my stem. Because I don't need these center lines, I'm going to go ahead and erase them. Now we have a pear. To shade the pear, we're going to use three different tones of gray. Because a pear is rounded, when we add our shading, the shading also needs to be rounded. We're going to imagine our light source coming in from the side over here and creating a shine on the pear in a curve. That section will remain white because the sun is coming in from this direction. The opposite direction will have a shadow. So we're going to make a large parenthesis shape at the bottom of the pear. That's going to be shaded the darkest. Color it in with your pencil. As you do your strokes, try to curve your strokes. It makes it look even more realistic. That's our darkest section of our pair. We're going to create another curved line. That's going to be our medium shading. I'm going to take another line, draw it across to give myself a guideline. Now I'm going to shade my pair again. I'm not going to shade it as dark. I'm going to give it again a medium tone. So I'm going to take my pencil, and I'm going to go back and forth with long strokes. Because I'm curving my pencil strokes, my finished product is going to look more realistic and more three-dimensional. I'm going to spend a little bit of time between the two tones blending them. Then I'm going to take a minute with the cheapest art tool and my favorite, finger and I'm going to smear my pencil shading. My last tone is going to be my lightest. I'm going to take just a minute and lightly shade my pear, again using the curves. I'm not going to touch that highlight area. I've reserved that for white. At the top, it's going to be smaller curved strokes to again make it look more three-dimensional. Spending a little bit of time between the two tones to kind of even them out. Then I'm going to use my finger again and blend.
So now what I have is a dark, a medium, and a light tone, and I also have a white highlight. I'm going to erase my pencil line here so my tones blend a little bit more evenly. If you want to make your drawing look even more realistic, spend just a minute giving a little bit of curved lines on the shadow side. I'm going to do that in a medium tone and then when I hit the medium I'm going to add a darker tone. I'm casting a shadow on this pair and because I'm repeating that parentheses shading, that parentheses shape over and over, it's going to look realistic. Spend a little bit of time blending with your finger. And that's our pair. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw an apple. It's very common for people to draw an apple as a circle. An apple isn't really a circle shape. It has a smaller bottom. Therefore, it's really not a sphere. To make your apple, you're going to make it not as tall as the pear, so you can give yourself a guideline if you'd like, and it's going to be on the same baseline as your pear. You are going to make a parenthesis shape that's kind of leaning in. So I'm going to start with one side. It's going to curve almost like a heart shape and go back down. Repeating the same thing on the other side. A curve and it comes back down. It almost looks like a vase. The bottom of an apple goes up and down the bump. The top is rounded. We're going to put a little line here to indicate the indent where the stem grows. And again, draw the stem the same way we did for the pear. A wider base a slight curve, and a bigger part at the top. So what I've done is I've drawn a parentheses here, and poking out of the parentheses I put the stem. Notice the placement of the stem is about a quarter of a way down the apple. To shade the apple you're going to use the same exact strategy. You're going to make a nice curved line at the bottom to indicate where you're going to put the darkest shading. You're going to do your darkest tone at the base of the apple. We're going to set up a little reserve spot for the highlight. Because the apple is curved, we're going to put a little curved section for our highlight. I'm going to place my medium tone here and begin long strokes of shading in a medium tone. Remember when you curve your pencil as you're drawing the shade it looks even more realistic. It gives your drawing more dimension. Use, again, the cheapest tool in the art room, your finger, to blend the two tones, to smooth them out. Take a minute to overlap a little bit of the dark onto the medium so that we have smooth transitions between the tones. That's another strategy to make it look even more realistic. Our last step is to give just a light tone to the remainder of the apple, and again, Long curved strokes makes for a realistic project, a realistic looking apple.
fill in the entire apple except for the section that's going to remain bright white. I'm going to add a little bit of a medium tone in that little devit where the stem is coming out of. That's going to make it look realistic and I'm going to spend just a little bit of time evening out those two tones. I'm going to take my finger, blend the pencil, spend some time working the transition so they are not abrupt. And then again, just like in the pear, I'm going to shade that side that's further away from the light source to give it even more dimension. Curve strokes. Spending some time blending the two tones so that the transition is not abrupt but smooth. I'm going to erase my outline that I drew for the shine because it isn't necessary. And again, just spending a little bit of time with the transitions of the tones. If you go back in with an eraser, you can really brighten up your highlight or add it in if necessary. There you have a pear and an apple with a dark, a medium, and a light tone with a highlight. Highlight, medium, light, medium, dark tone and shading on the sides.